So this section, uh, section uh, 1.8, deals with uh, inverse functions. That was the, the information that we talked about in the previous section in terms of the composition of functions was the prelude to the concept of the inverse. We had something going on when we talked about uh, f composed with g. We evaluated that at x, and you remember that this is the same as f of g of x. But when this comes out to equal to x itself, then there's a, a pretty close relationship between f and g. When this happens, g is said to be the inverse of f. And so today we uh, would give a, a quantity to this uh, in this particular section. So we want to find the inverse function and then from there uh, there's a neat uh, test called the uh, horizontal line test that determines whether or not a function uh, is said to have an inverse. And then um, this idea of an inverse, if a function has an inverse, then that also means it's cut amount that the function is one to one. So uh, just a, a new phrase for the same thing. <coughs> Uh, again, we deal with uh, the, uh, uh, some of the uh, domain. Uh, we talk about the domain of the function. What's the, what's the domain of the inverse function? Talk about the range of the function. What's the range of the inverse function? And, and I uh, clarify all that uh, as we go through. And obviously, uh, graphs, which is the idea of the entire class, uh, the, the course itself is to try to make amends with two friends that somehow, because of society, they broke up. And what we're trying to do is to put these two friends back together. One friend is called the analytics, and the other friend is called the geometry. Now, at one time, they existed in co-harmony together. But then, uh, due to the idea of splitting things, this idea of rationalism, um, I believe in your philosophy, you discussed Rene Descartes, uh, who uh, gave to us this, this idea of analytical geometry, which basically is the concept that we can take one thing and we can look into it and we can devise from it several entities that make up that sum. Um, and, and so what, what we have from that is in looking at uh, a picture, a graph, a building, if you will, any kind of shape, we have this cylinder. So we can talk about uh, the geometric composition of the cylinder. But we can also talk about the algebra of it. And that's what uh, you've been intubated with uh, for a very long time. But somehow we have been taught that I can just focus on the algebra and forget the picture. That doesn't make any sense. Because the algebra comes from the, it comes from the picture. If I'm going to understand algebra, I have to be able to see something. And if I can't see it, then all this algebra is just mumbo jumbo. So it's two things that should have been one already. That is the algebra or the analytics, and then it's the geometry or just the picture or the graph. So we want to be able to see it 
And then we'll want to be able to reason uh, uh, with it to be able to come to some kind of conclusion uh, to whatever we're talking about. So, let us see. So, first we uh, define this inverse function. You remember that this here, we have two functions, f and g. You remember this is the same thing as f composed with g evaluated at x. And this is the same as g composed with l evaluated at x. So if f composed with g is equal to x for, for every x, all x in the domain of g, and if g composed with f is equal to x for every x in the domain of f, then we call uh, g, the function g, this function is said to be the inverse of f. And then we denote it by f inverse. Now I thought that was a pretty good note here with, uh, with the question that when we see this, this symbol f uh, inverse, is that saying f to the negative one? No, it's not saying that. It's not saying that, that this function is raised to the negative first power. Uh, this, uh, this phrase f inverse uh, means that the function is the inverse of the function f. So it's not this idea of, okay, I can just uh, take one over f and I get, no, that's not what they're talking about. So. So just make sure that uh, we note that, and I thought that was a pretty good uh, note uh, for us as well. So, so, so that is applicable. Steps to finding the inverse of a function. These are my steps, uh, just how I've been doing it uh, uh, forever. So when we're given f of x is equal to something, we're going to replace that f of x with y. And then we're going to solve for x in terms of y. That is just, we're going to get x by itself. We're going to isolate x. Now once I have that x by itself, I'm going to replace that x with f inverse. And then I'm going to replace that y with x. Um, and then we check just to make sure. And we'll do some problems here to uh, hopefully um, kind of get that saturated uh, in your soul. <laughs> So we verify, make sure that f composed with f inverse is indeed x, and then just the reverse way, f inverse composed with f is, an, uh, is indeed x. Now the domain of f is the same as the range of f inverse, the range of f inverse the same as the domain of f inverse. Now, now this statement down below, who can see that? This statement here, this statement, is a statement that I made after looking at something, some image. Now, the image that I'm going to give you will stay with you forever. And because of that, you can glean from the image this statement. Here's what I mean. So, so so the domain is a set of functions, and they're said to be mapped to another uh, uh, set of values, that is, excuse me. So this is f. This would be here our domain of f. The domain is where I'm coming from, right? And then this is the range of f. That's where I'm going. So if we can show that, that the function f indeed has an inverse, then the inverse just, it just goes in the opposite direction of the function f. So this is f inverse. So now do you see that for f inverse, its range is the same as the domain of f. So this is the same thing as the range of f inverse. And, and look at F inverse is coming from over here, so this is my domain for F inverse. 
does that image make sense and does it help us now to to connect what's happening so so in my head that's all i have is that image i don't have the statement down here i can't who can rem remember all this stuff right? <laughs> so all i have is i have a domain i have a range i have where i'm coming from i have where i'm going to f and then f inverse just reverses that order so here for f inverse this becomes my my domain and then for f inverse over here that becomes my, my range so that's what that statement says there exactly Here's the horizontal line test. If a horizontal line crosses uh, the graph of a function more than one time, then we say that that function does not have an inverse. If the horizontal line crosses only one time uh, for that particular graph, then that function does have an inverse. Do you remember the vertical line test? The vertical line test? What what was the purpose of the vertical line test? It told us what? If it was a function or not. Exactly. Exactly. The vertical line test told us if the equation was a function or not. So now we have the horizontal line test, which which says it's already a function. Now I want to determine whether or not that function has an inverse. So then I apply the horizontal line test on the function on the graph of a function. If, if the, the a graph satisfies the horizontal line test, then we say that the function is one-to-one. -one. Now let me see if I can show you what, what that means in here. A function is one-to-one -one if no two ordered pairs have the same second component. Remember for the function, uh, we said that a function is a relationship of, of, of ordered pair where no two ordered pair have the same first component. That was for a function. But now, if the function has an inverse, it looks at the second component. Now, here's what's happening. Say, for example, if, if we have this domain of f, let's say we have some numbers in there. Let's say we have 1, 3, 6, and 7. And then let's say that these numbers are being mapped over here to some range. And let's say that these numbers would be negative 4, and say 5. So let's say here that the 1 goes there, the 3 goes here. The 8 goes there, and the 5 goes there. So for the function values, we have this order pair, 1 comma negative 4 comma 3 comma 31, 6 comma 8, 7 comma 5. Now for f inverse, if it's one to one, which it is, one to one means that one this one goes to negative four only. Right? There's no overlap. This three goes to thirty-one. That's it. One to one. So there's no these these two values go to this one value over here, that's not one to one. Or this one value goes to two values over there, that's not one to one. Six goes to eight only. Seven goes to five only. That's that's what that's what we mean by one to one. So if we have that, then we can reverse it. Now notice that if, if you had overlap, once you reverse it, you don't know where the other guy is going to. Matter of fact, if you reverse it, if you have this overlap, then you end up with the, the inverse not even being a function. <laughs> so here, this guy is negative 4, comma 1. So, do you remember that the domain of f is the range 
of f inverse. And the range of f is the domain of f inverse. So this is 31 comma 3, 8 comma 6, 5 comma 7. I mean, bless you. That's ultimately what was happening with for the inverse. That's what we want to be able to get. That if I have ordered pair for the function, can I reverse those ordered pair and then call the, the reverse order the inverse? We want to make sure that is one to one. That's the key. And if it is, then yes, you can. So again, the horizontal line test, if a horizontal line crosses the graph of a function more than once and the function does not have an inverse, otherwise the inverse is said to exist. All right, let's take this one. Uh, the graph of, of f and f inverse will be symmetric. This is a statement. It, um, it just didn't have room on the other page. The graph of f and f inverse will be symmetric with, with respect to the line y equal to x. In, in other words, When I talk about a graph, let's say, for example, if, if this is the graph for the function f, and here's the line y equal to x, it's just that, that bisector. So what f and f inverse suggest for the graph is that the inverse will always be symmetric or a image, a butterfly image, with respect to the line y equal x. Okay. So you take that on that, and you know, of course, I can't draw straight. straight dotted line, right? As if that's any better, but anyway. <laughs> so if you take the line y for the x, if I can find the graph of f, and if I can just fold the page on the line y for the x, then once I fold it on that crease, the image over here is All right, let's look at some problems. Find f composed with g and g composed with f and determine whether the pair of functions f and g are inverses of each other. So we, we're given f is 9x and then g is x over 9. So this f composed with g, this is f, uh, remember we said replace g of x with what it is, x over 9. Then the function says whatever you give me I'm giving you this, this thing here. It says to multiply it by 9. So this is 9 times what you give me. I'm giving you x over 9. Well, this is 9 divided by 9. They, they cancel out. And so all we have left is x. Ta-da! Or it's ice cube would say, ta da But anyway. <laughs> So this is g composed with f, so f of x is 9x, so I replace the f of x with 9x, and uh, g says, whatever you give me, you put it here, that guy goes there, it, it says divided by 9, so I'm giving you 9x divided by 9. The 9's cancel, we have left an x. Well, for the definition, for a function to have an inverse, that's what we want. We want that f composed of g is equal to x and with g composed with f equal to x. And so we conclude that f and g are inverses of each other.
Let's look at this one. So we want to find f composed of g. This is f of g of x. But g of x is in the inside. g of x is x minus 6 all over 3. x minus 6 all over 3. So f says what you give me. See, this is the same. This is the same thing that goes there. So f says, whatever you give me, multiply by 3, and then add 6. So here, so we have this 3 here times what I'm giving you, and I'm giving you x minus 6 all over 3. And then plus 6. Simplify. This is 3 divided by 3. They cancel. Oops. Dang, darn it. So this is x minus 6 plus 6. Well, the 6 is cancel. So we have left x. Good. So now g composed with f, g of f of x, f of x is 3x plus 6. So g says what you give me minus a 6 from it, and then divide all of that by 3. So this x, that term, goes there. Right? So what we're saying is g says whatever you give me, I'm giving you 3x plus 6. Then it says from that minus 6 and then all that over 3. Does that make sense? Okay. Now this is, let's see, the 6 minus 6 cancels out. So we have 3x all over 3. Threes cancel, and that just gives us x so f and g are inverses of each other okay. now when I first looked at these two that g of x to my head I said, you know, I don't think G is going to be the inverse of F. So let's work it out. And, and again, sometimes, you know, our intuition um, it, it is not sufficient when it comes to the mathematics. So let's do the math. So this is F of G. G is 6 over X plus 4. So F says... This is 6 divided by whatever you give me, minus 4. But I'm giving you all of this. So I'm going to replace that x here with 6 over x plus 4. So I have 6 up top all over what I'm giving you, which is the 6 over x plus 4. And then here, this is minus 4. So we just let the math do what it does. So this is 4 divided by 4 to cancel out. So let's write what we have left. This is 6 all over 6 over x. Well, this is 6 divided by 6 over x. So this is 6 times x over 6. If you want to you know, put a 1 under there, you can. It doesn't matter. So this is... And just put that up there. So this is 6 divided by 6. Cancels out. We have left an x. Well, by golly, they are inverses. So let's work down here. G of f of x. f of x is that guy here. 6 over x minus 4. So G says, what you give me, 
it's going to be 6 over what you give me, and I'm giving you 6 all over x minus 4, and then he says on the outside, add a 4. that represents the image of six, or the image of G, excuse me. All right, so let's do the math on this guy. So this is, this is six divided by six uh, over X minus four. So this is six divided by, so that becomes six times. We flip, we get X minus four all over six plus four. So here the six is cancel. And so we get now x minus four plus four. Well, the four is cancel. And we have just x. If there's something here that you missed, feel free to, like when I leave class, I go up to my office and I always post this right there in your blackboard so you'll be able to see all this information there. Okay. All right, here it says the function uh, f equal to x plus 21 is 1 to 1. So to tell us that the function is one to one means that the function does have an inverse. The inverse exists. <laughs> so then they say, find the inverse uh, for uh, the function. And then part B, verify that your equation is correct. That is, check F composed with, before we were doing F composed with G, same thing as doing F composed with F inverse. So is that equal to X? And then likewise, does f inverse composed with f, does that also equal to, to x? Well, let's see. So the first thing we want to do is to find uh, f inverse. We go back to the steps that I had given back here. So I'm going to replace f of x with y. Then I'm going to solve for x in terms of y. That is, get x by itself. Then once I have x equal to whatever, I replace that x by itself with f inverse of x, and I replace that y with x. Okay, let's see. So here, this is f of x. I'm going to replace the f of x with y. So this is y is equal to x plus 21. This implies the implication is not equal. It's an implication, that is, that this whole statement, I can infer from it a, a consequence from it. So, so the result is this new thing over here. So this implies that I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 21 on both sides. So we get y minus 21 is equal to x. Now I'm just going to write that just x equal to. That is, I'm going to read it from the right to the left. X is equal to Y minus 21. So now, the next step, I'm going to replace this X with F inverse of X. That's equal to replace that Y with X minus 21. And that's the inverse. Okay. Was that okay? And, and those are the steps all the time. So now this statement over here, it has A, B, C, D, and then it says put your inverse. But then also where it says x greater than or equal or x not equal to or for all x or for x less than, that represents the domain. 
that represents the domain. So, so here, um, and he, he's looking for the domain for F inverse. Look at this function F inverse. It's a polynomial. X minus 21, it's a straight line. That means that it includes all real numbers, right? So when I look here, this guy is a straight line or a polynomial. with domain that includes all real numbers. We say for all x in the set of reals. Now, where's that statement? Is here. just mathematical notation for all x that's an element of the set of reals right. so we had better pick c and then we put our answer this is x minus 21 right. our domain includes all real numbers there's no restriction on x minus 21 x can be anything if it's 1 over x x can be equal to 0 right if it's the square root of x, x has to be positive, or zero or positive. Right. Verify that the equation is correct. So here, you're going to put uh, in my math lab, f of f inverse, you put what you got for f inverse. This is x minus 21. Put that there. And then here, you just put x. Right. Well, you can work it out if you want. This is f of x minus 21. Well, I better put the other statement. This is f of f inverse of x. This is f of f inverse. We got to be x minus 21. So f says, whatever you give me, add 21 to it. I'm giving you x minus 21 plus 21. That's equal to x. And then verify f inverse of f of x, f inverse, and f of, and f of x is x plus 21. So f inverse says, where'd it go? It's right here. It says whatever you give me, it says minus 21 from it. So I'm giving you x plus 21 minus 21. So we put, this is x plus 21, x. And then the last thing that it pops up is, it says this equation is, did you, did, is it verified? Is it verified that f inverse is indeed um, the inverse? That is, did you check f composed with f inverse? Is that equal to x? Yes. Did you check f inverse composed with f? If that, is that equal to x? Yes. So you, you select verify. Okay. All right. All right. Same thing there. Let, let's move on. That, that guy is the same. Let me just uh, work through this. Um, this function they tell us is one to one. Find the inverse. Again, I'm going to replace the f of x with y. This is 5x plus 2. So now I'm going to solve for x. So to do that, first, it's just our algebra. I subtract 2 on both sides, so I get y minus 2 is equal to 5x. The next thing we do is to divide everything by 5. So this implies that we have y minus 2 all over 5 is equal to x. This is x equal to, not changing anything, just just writing it over, reading it from uh, right to left. y minus 2 all over 5. x is equal to y minus 2 all over 5. So our instructions said replace the x with f inverse. And then replace the y here with x. So this is x minus 2 
all over five. Again, the, the inverse is a straight line. So this is going to contain all real numbers. There's no restriction. If the x was in the denominator, then I have a restriction, right? Because here I cannot divide by 0. But since x is in my numerator, this is just x minus 2. This is a polynomial. So I, I get all real numbers. It's that guy. And then I'm going to put here for f inverse what we got, x minus 2 all over 5. And then we're going to run through the steps down here. They want us to see f of f inverse. So this is f of f inverse is x minus 2 all over 5. So the function says whatever you give me multiply it times 5 then plus 2. So this is 5 times what I'm giving you is x minus 2 all over 5, and then plus 2. Well, the 5's cancel. So this is x minus 2 plus 2. The 2's cancel. We get x. So this is x there. This is f of x minus 2 all over 5. And then for the other one, f inverse. Composed with f of x. This is f inverse. f of x is 5x plus 2. And so the inverse says whatever you give me is minus, whatever you give me, then minus 2 all over 5. So I'm giving you 5x plus 2 minus 2 all over 5. Do you see that's equal to x? Do you see that? It comes out to be x, right? You see that, Jamar? You see that? Good, good, good. So this is F inverse composed with F. They want you to put F here. And F is the 5x plus 2. And then that's verified to be x. Verified. You know, and after a while, if they don't change the problem type, it just becomes redundant, all right? So here's something a little bit different. Uh, so, so this is a, um, a, a cubic uh, uh, function. This idea of a hyperbola. So here the, the function is equal to this. It's one to one. It says find an equation for f inverse. <coughs> so but the steps are the same. I'm going to apply those steps to any problem where it asks to find the inverse. So I replace f of x with y. That's equal to x to the third minus 5. And I'm going to solve for x in terms of y. So here, this implies that we're going to add 5 on both sides. So this is y plus 5 is equal to x to the third. Now, since this is the third power, we're going to take the cube root of both sides. So this implies that we have the cube root of y plus 5 is equal to the cube root of x to the third. And that's the only way that we can get x by itself. Right. Basically, we're raising x to the third to the one-third power. That's, that, that's what that cube root means. Well, this is just x. So this implies, if I read this from uh, right to left, this is x is equal to the cube root of y plus 5. Replace the x with f inverse of x. That's equal to the cube root. Replace that y with x plus 5. So that becomes the inverse function. Now, now, the function f is a polynomial. Let's, let's see if we, can, if we can, uh, can, can work it out so you can see it. This 
is f this is f inverse because down here they, they have a question of what's the domain so for the function f the domain is all real numbers so here this domain for f is from negative infinity to positive infinity the range for x to the third, if x is positive, x to the third is positive. If, if x is negative, x to the third is negative. So it picks up again all real numbers over here also. So then they ask over here, what's the domain? The domain is going to be all real numbers. What's the, this is the domain for f inverse all x. Right. See, that, that's the, the neat property about the, the, the odd roots is that they retain their sign. It's the even roots that don't. So that's why we have the restriction on square root, fourth root, sixth root, that that, that, that radicand must be positive. But for, the, but for the odd roots, doesn't matter. It picks up all real numbers. So then I'm going to put in there this cube root of x plus 5. And in my math lab, they, they have that legend box. When you pick, it, it has uh, for the, the radical, and it'll say, like, it'll be a radical, then it'll have a box there and a box there. That's what you pick. And then for that box up top, you put the 3 there, and then you can put in x plus 3. So this is f of the inverse. We got to be the cube root of x plus 5. And does that give us x? Well, let's check and see. So this is f of f inverse of x. This is f of the inverse is that cube root of x plus 5. So the function y says, whatever you give me, cube it, minus 5. Cube it, cube the whole thing, and then on, on the side, subtract 5. So here, I'm giving you the cube root of x plus 5. But f says, whatever you give me, raise that to the third power, minus 5. Now, the cube root raised to the third power is 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 x let's look at that this is x plus five to the one-third power that's what the cube root means and that's being raised to the third power minus so if i have a power raised to a power x to the n raised to the nth power you remember that's a power raised to a power i multiply the powers so I have x plus 5 raised to the 1 third raised to the third 1 third to the third is just 1 so all I get is x plus 5 to the first power which is x plus 5 minus 5 I get x does the same thing happen for f inverse of f of x f of x is x to the third minus five let's see the inverse says wh whatever you give me cube it all the, the, take the cube root of it excuse me but i'm giving you not just x anymore i'm giving you x to the third minus five but then it has a plus five in there for x well the fives cancel i have left the cube root of x to the third that's equal to x is verified. Okay. So they, they change it up, and that's good, because if, if not, we get dull. Yeah, that was that, um, that box that you want to pick for that, that cube root. When you're working in my math lab, you'll see that. That's the one you want to pick there. And then you can put the three up there, up top, and then the x plus 5.
Okay, here's a different one. Now, this is uh, by far uh, just one of my favorites, if it's not just the one that I just, I just like this one. Okay. I wouldn't dare say love. You know, how can you love the square root? Right? <laughs> anyway, uh, so they want us to find the inverse function. So we have y equal to the square root of x. So I'm going to solve for x in terms of y. That means to get x by itself. In order to get x by itself, if it's the square root, I have to square both sides. So this implies that y squared is equal to the square root of x raised to the second power. So this implies that y squared is equal to x. So again, I'm going to read that. This is x equal to y squared. So I'm going to replace the x with f inverse of x, and that's to replace the y with x, that's x squared. Okay. Now, just a note on what's happening with the so-called domain and range. This is f doing that, and then f inverse is doing this. What is the, what's the domain for f? This is the function f, what's the domain? What, what values of x can we pick? What values of x can't we pick? So positive or zero up or all positive, right? Because this is the square root. Very good. So my domain would be from zero to positive infinity. Likewise, if I'm if the square root is only picking up positive values, then the result of that is also positive. So that means that oh, this is f inverse. That means that my domain for f inverse had better be positive or equal to zero. Right? You see that guy right there? That's positive or equal to zero. And then we put the inverse that we got, and that gave us x squared. So that, that limits the graph for x squared. x squared is not the whole parabola anymore. It's just half of it. You see that? So for, for, the, for the, the function f, it's the square root of x. It's this guy right here, f inverse. And then for the in, I'm sorry, that's for the function. Dang, gun it. The function is the square root. And then for the inverse, it's the, it's the x squared. the line y equal to x bisects that. So uh, about the line y equal to x, you get this pretty cool butterfly. I believe it was called Martha and Godzilla. But anyway, um, I think Martha was the big, was Martha the big butterfly? Yeah, Mothra. Mothra, okay. Correct my pronunciation. Thank you. <laughs> Boy, I know you'll wake up now, right? <laughs> You're talking about my stuff now, dude. <laughs> okay, let's get back. <laughs> man, I love that stuff, man. It's, it's good. It's good. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so they want us to check F composed with F inverse. So this is f of f inverse is that x squared. I'll just check one because our time is, is of, of essence and I want to get to the next section. It's a lot of these problems. Boy, I tell you, you got to eat your Wheaties before you come. 
you got to eat some Cheerios. But, you know? So, Jumping jacks before class. Jumping jacks, that's not a bad idea. Jumping jacks before class. A, a five minute workout, yes, that's right. That may work. So the function F is the square root of whatever you give me. And yes, that's, uh, that's equal to, to X. Here, definitely X values are all positive. So here, this is F of F inverse. F inverse was that X squared. And this is x over here, f inverse of the function f of x, which is the square root of x. And that guy works out as well, too. Okay. Okay, the one, this one, uh, this problem comes up, and, and what I thought was best was to show you the graph, uh, because there they give you four selections and so they want you to be able to graph the um, uh, the function and also graph f inverse so let, let's find f inverse so we say that this is y is equal to 7x minus 5 we're going to solve for x so just looking at that this is y plus 5 divided by 7 so f inverse is x plus 5 all over seven. All right. I committed the 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 uh, the cardinal no no in math. I skipped a few steps. <laughs> so the inverse function is this guy right here, the x plus five all over seven. Then it says choose the correct graph. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, what you want to do is just for each uh, function, just get a couple of points uh, so, so we can graph. And then what I do is I take those two points and I just reverse them and I get my inverse. So, <laughs> so here, let's say this is x and this is going to be for f of x for the function. I pick easy stuff, x equals 0, y equal to negative 5 x equal to 1, then I get 7 minus 5, I get 2. Now that's just the reverse for um, here x and f inverse. So that's just going to reverse that, negative 5, 0, 2, 1. All right. Now the graphs down there below are kind of small, so I have to kind of blow it up for myself and then try to match it up. Keep this in mind, since they give us four choices, you know that the function and its inverse with respect to the line y equal to x are going to be symmetric. Right? So you can kind of pinpoint sometimes some of those graphs where it's not symmetric with respect to the line y equal to x, and you can exclude some of those possibilities. So 0, negative 5, and then 1, comma 2, thin kind of graphs, right? So this is for F. Then we reverse that, negative 5, and then x equal to 2, y is 1, here. So we know it's not, it's not going to be A or B. So we're looking at C or, or D. It looks like C. Look at my graph up here. Yeah. 
you see that that dotted red line is going down so so that that tells us there for a that red dotted line that that slope would be negative both of these slopes are positive right so if you look at it c would only meet that criteria again we, we don't throw away you know here m is five and then for the inverse this is one over seven times x plus five over seven so here our m is one over seven positive positive so that means that both of these graphs have slopes the graphs are going upward right Let's see so the, you know so what we picked up on before and those previous sections we have to kind of put all that stuff together you know in, in doing this this work as well too so the uh, state the domain and range uh, of F using the, the interval notation, the domain of F is this guy is just straight line, it's polynomial, so it's going to be all real numbers. So here this guy would be from negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range is the same, it picks up all real numbers. And we talked about that the domain of F inverse is the range for F but they, they both have the, the, the same um, uh, sets from negative infinity to positive infinity and here from negative infinity to positive infinity. Again, I'm using this is F F inverse domain of F range of F inverse. This is the range of F domain of F inverse. Okay. I think this was the one, was this the problem? One of these problems is that one. That guy is the one with some issues. So I just do both of them and then we'll be through for today. I do both of these problems, get the roll, and then um, I'll cover the next section on Tuesday and then just speak about the review for the test for Thursday. Okay? Um, so here, find the equation for the inverse. Again, I'm going to replace this f of x with y. So I get y is equal to x squared minus 9. Now, when they give us stuff like that, you see that x is greater than or equal to 0? They're telling you that's the domain. That's the domain for f. They give us that. That's cool. So I'm going to here solve for x in terms of y. So I'm going to add uh, 9 on both sides. So this is y plus 9 is equal to x squared. Now, since this is x squared, I'm, I'm trying to isolate it. So here we're going to take the square root of both sides. So this implies that I have plus or minus the square root of y plus 9 is equal to the square root of x squared. So that's just x. So I get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of y plus 9. Now I have to determine if it's going to be plus or if it's going to be minus, it can't be both of them because for the inverse, it has to be one to one. Well, since here the domain of F is positive, that means that my range for F inverse had better be positive. So I pick the plus and not the negative. So this implies that F inverse of X is equal to the square root of X plus nine. Replace that Y with X. Check this out. This is a side note. If they had given us f equal to x squared minus 9, and if they had said x, oops, x is less than or equal to 0, then that would have 
imply it then that f inverse of x is negative square root of x plus 9. See that negative there based on the domain for f? If the domain for f is the same as the range for f inverse. So, so f inverse is the square root of x plus 9. All right. They want us to find the graph uh, for this. Now, I need to put back here what we got for f inverse. f inverse we got was, what was that? f inverse for this guy? This is on the previous page. Can you help me out? This is what? Okay. The square root of x plus 9. Okay. Good. So, the function f of x is the x squared minus 9. So, it's x squared, that parabola, but then it has a vertical shift down 9. So, I'm going to go down to 9, and then I'm going to only... Uh, draw half of that because it says x is positive and so here we think look at this for b that looks good a we rule out right just just looking at f of x right now if, if that's that solid line then then that matches what about c what would you say for c can you rule that one out? Yeah. We can rule that one out. Because think, think about it. If we just put everything together, based on what we've learned before, this is the graph for F. And then this square root has X plus 9. That means it has a horizontal shift, 9 going to the left. And then we draw that basic shape for the, uh, the square root of, of 9. This is f inverse. Can we rule out d? So we can rule out c. can rule out d. You put them both together, don't we get b? And again, the graphs must be symmetric with respect to the line y equal to x. That's always the kicker as well, too. That, that definitely rules out D, right? And it looks like it rules out C, and it rules out, out, out A, because A, they're trying to make it symmetric with the, li the line Y equal to negative X, right? <laughs> well, that's not right. It's this guy. So, let's see how we got the domain and the range. All right. Here for the, I'm just going to look at the function f. Because automatically you get f inverse. All right. So, the function f, it says the domain is all positive values. So this guy is from zero to positive infinity. Now I look at his graph for the range. I look at his graph for the range. This was at negative nine. So based on, on those y values, the y values for the graph go from negative nine to positive infinity. See that? It goes from negative nine to positive infinity. I see, I look at the graph. I'm looking at the graph. So this is how we get the range there. And then you reverse those for the, for the inverse function, and you have that. Now, this, this last problem posed a problem. 
this last problem posed the problem. Um, let's see. It had a, there was a trick to this one. <laughs> Given the function there, complete parts A to C, find the inverse. Let's find the inverse. And then it says part B, find F and F inverse on the same rectangular uh, coordinate system, and then use interval notation to find the domain and range. From this page here, can you possibly pick out where the problem may be? Can you find the critical issue? Does anything stand out? I mean, it's not, it's not like it's a problem, like it's wrong, but it's a problem that if I don't see it, it could throw me off in terms of trying to find the results. Yes, sir. Um, does x minus 4 in that have anything to do uh, X less, I'm sorry, you said x minus 4 or x less than or equal to 4? In the parentheses where it says x minus 4, would that correlate at all with that fact that the x being uh, less than or equal to 4 is going to make it negative later on? Well, it could, it could be negative or positive, but, that, but, but you're in the right area. And, 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 and I appreciate that, uh, you, you're definitely thinking. The critical area here would be is that the restriction for the domain is on the values x less than or equal to four. That's the key there. That's what I want you to, to, to kind, of, kind of keep in your head because as we work this problem, that becomes a factor later on. And you're like, dang gun it, that almost kicked me. But let me show you this and then we'll wrap everything up for today. So we're gonna find the inverse. Um, so here, this is y is equal to, replace the f of x with y, is equal to x minus 4 to b squared. So I'm going to solve for uh, x in terms of y. If this is x minus 4 to b squared, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, always for algebra opposites. So this implies that we, here we have plus or minus the square root of y is equal to the square root of x minus 4 to b squared. And so this is, that's just x minus 4 inside there. So I'm just going to write that. This is x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of y. And so I get the x by itself. This is x is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of y. Now I got to claim that x is the inverse and that y is x, but I can't do that until I clear out this plus or minus. I cannot have plus or minus going on for inverse functions. It has to be one to one. If it's plus or minus, I get two values for one value. Right? Now that, that probably works really good at, at Hardee's or at, at Wendy's, you know, two for one, but it doesn't work good here. You know, oh boy, the two for one at Hardy's a long time ago. That was the thing early in the morning going to work, right? I gotta stop and get my, no, anyway, just joking. Uh, had a friend, that's, that, that was his thing. Uh, God bless his soul. He, he, we, he and I shared an office about 25 years ago uh, down in Montgomery. And, and he, he said, he said, want me to get you two for two? For two? I said, no, buddy, just help yourself, man. But anyway, okay, 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 okay. We gotta get rid of this, this plus or minus nature. That's, this, this, this bifurcation uh, uh, can't work. Which one do we choose, plus or minus? Minus. It'll be minus because of that guy right there. Because the domain values are picking up negative values, four and less than four. Wow, see that? So the, the little part of that is positive, but that's a little window between zero and uh, four, but we're gonna get that with the four minus uh, here as well too. So, so here we're gonna, we're gonna have F inverse of X is equal to four minus the square root of X. Just note that. We choose negative for the inverse C 
sense the domain of F picks up negative values also. Let, let's let's see. Make sure we get it. So so here for the domain for for f that goes from negative infinity to four. Negative infinity to four. The, the so-called range values will be positive because x minus 4 is to be squared. Square something, it always becomes positive. So, so here, this f inverse is equal to 4 minus the, the square root of x is minus because Look, F inverse is the same as the domain for F. It has to pick up the same values. So that, that was the key there. So we get F inverse is 4 minus the square root of X. But that negative, that's the key. So I want you to see that. All right. All right, which graph will it be? Well, let's say this. Which graph can we rule out? Definitely A, right? Definitely C. That's not symmetric with respect to the line y equal to x, right? D looks bad, too. Do you see that? We're talking about symmetry. That's not symmetric. That's the guy there. Now the domain for F inverse is going to be the same as the range of, of F. So this is going to be from positive infinity to um, here, zero to positive infinity, excuse me. And this guy is from negative infinity to four. Yep. And I think that 